Namaste everyone, once again, uh, this problem all seems to be almost the same as the previous ones we solved. In fact, we can use the same table uh, that we created for those. Of course, with the uh, slight changes in the, in the names of the gears and arm that we have around here. So here the arm is called A. In fact, uh, he has termed uh, this as a spider because this is having uh, you know, uh, three points. Three, it carries three uh, gears. So it's going, he's calling it as spider. We can as well call it as arm. So we have to start with arm and uh, taking the sun here, then uh, the planet and the annular ring. Yeah. Annular ring. So this is the order in which we have to take it up. And we have to follow the same steps. Initially, we have to assume the arm to be stationary, one rotation to be given here, then the other two rotations we have to find. And uh, same way, we can create the whole table the way it is shown around here. So now let us uh, uh, go to this problem and see what are the things provided to us. So he's telling uh, that the pitch circle diameter of the internally tooth, uh, toothed ring, that is D diameter of D, is 216. Right. So this doesn't appear to be the exact value. He's just telling uh, what should be the range of this diameter. And the module he's telling it, so module M is 4. The module, if you remember, the formula for module is diameter of the teeth, uh, diameter of the gear divided by number of teeth. Right. And module of two gears which are meshing with each other, that has to remain the same. Going forward, we see that the ring D is stationary. So the diameter of this value, we have to equate it to zero because this one is stationary. Then uh, the spider A, which carries three planet wheels C of equal sizes, that is to make one revolution in the same sense as the wheel B for every five revolutions of the driving spindle carrying the sun wheel B. That means when the when the uh, gear B when it rotates five times, the the spider, it should rotate only once. Now, they are both in the same direction. They are both in the same direction. Now, here, the speeds can be also considered as number of rotations. So, we can directly substitute these values over here. So, Na equal to 1 means here y equals 1. And Nb equals 5 uh, can be substituted here as x plus 5 equals to 5. Now we can substitute the value of y here and that way we will get x value as 4. So x and y, both the values we directly got it. So these two can be substituted in the other equations to get a few more set of equations. So here let us substitute this. So we get 1 minus 4 times tb by tc. So this is the speed of c. This is the speed of C. So this is one equation we get. Then the speed of D and we already know the speed of D is 0. So we'll just take this equation and move forward. Y value is 1 minus X value being 4 TB by TT. So this has to be equal to 0. So this is another equation that we got. Let's move forward and see what the question wants us to find. The question is asking us to determine the suitable number of teeth for each of the wheels. So we'll have to find all the number of teeth. Fine. So we'll have to find the teeth on uh, D. We'll have to find the teeth on C. We'll have to find the teeth on uh, B. So all these number of teeth we have to find. And also he's telling the exact diameter of the pitch circle of the ring. So diameter of D. So this value that is given to us seems to be the approximate value, we will have to find the exact value of this diameter as well. So we have almost solved this uh, problem up to here and we have to, have to take these equations and move forward and try to solve. Uh, this we cannot move forward because NC is not known to us whereas here only there are two unknowns so let us take this equation and let us see what we get. So 1 equals 4 times TB by TD is what we get. And then if you send TD to this side, we get TD equals 4 times TB. Fine. So this is the relation between uh, the number of teeth that we get. And number of teeth on the, on the ring, on the annular ring can be found using this information over here. 
fine because we know module is equal to diameter by teeth so this equation gives us teeth equals diameter by module so we can apply this for the uh, annular ring d so if we substitute 216 by 4 we get 54 so the number of teeth on d we are supposing it to be 54 now let us substitute that 54 around here let us see what we get the number of teeth on b the number of teeth on b will be td divided by 4 and when we substitute 54 by 4 whoa there is a problem here fine so we cannot have number of teeth and in decimals we can either have one teeth or two or three all these are going to be natural numbers fine we cannot have negative number of teeth neither can we have some decimal or fractional uh, number of teeth so this is what the problem we are facing here so 54 is not something we can take 54 is not something we can take so we can either go to the higher one or the lower one so whichever satisfies so the number which is divisible by 4 on the higher side it is 56 and on the lower side it is 52 so these are the numbers which is divisible by 4 so we cannot go with this we will have to go either with 56 or with 52 so let us see if we are getting 56 as the number then TB will be 56 by 4 so that will give us 14 which is an even number and in this case if we take 52 if we take 52 we are getting it as 13 so this is an odd number so as far as, as, far as possible try to avoid using the odd numbers go with the even number so we'll go with 56 and we will take number of teeth on B as 14 so we found the number of teeth on D that we got it as 56 and uh, number of teeth on B we are getting it as 14 now let us see using these two can we find the number of teeth on C so here once again we will have to release uh, use the relation between the diameters fine so you can see here this here is the diameter of C and this here is the diameter of B half of it so diameter of B by 2 now the total diameter if you see here the total uh, this total length the total length is half the diameter of the ring that is B fine so now these relations we can use you know uh, relate the diameters so diameter of B by 2 will be equal to diameter of C plus diameter of B, uh, B by 2 now if you remember the formula for module we have told that the module is equal to diameter by T so this can also be modified as uh, diameter equals module multiplied with the number of teeth so this relation we will use here and we will get module into number of teeth on D by 2 equals module module for both will come out common I will just write it outside number of teeth on C and db becomes number of teeth on b and by 2 will come out as it is so this module will cancel from both sides and now we can see we have a relation between the number of teeth on all the three gears the two number of teeth we have already found let us substitute in the, those in this and let us see if we are able to find the value of tc so tc if you see here the tc tb by 2 will go that side so td by 2 minus t b by 2 so you see this is getting divided by 2 and that's the reason I had told you not to go with odd numbers where we have to go with even numbers so now this will be coming handy to us so TD is 56 that divided by 2 minus TB TB we're getting 14 by 2 so this we can solve easily if you solve this you will get 20 one as the answer so number of teeth on C will be 21 so all the number of teeth we have found and now he is asking us the exact diameter of DC now if you remember we had we didn't go with the 54 number of teeth we had to go with 56 because that we we, to, we took the higher one because that was providing us with a even number so this is the number of teeth which we will have to use to find the exact diameter of D so once again we will be using the formula for module here so diameter will be equal to module into number of teeth so this we will apply for the diameter D 
fine so td we have found so td we didn't go with 54 we took the higher value that is 56 and module is the same module 4 times 56 is what gives us the exact diameter so that's coming out as 224 so that's it that completes the problem this is the exact value of the diameter for the annular ring so as you can see uh, as i told formation of the table completes half your problem the rest of the thing once the table is formed it just remains mathematical fine you may have to go through a number of equations and try to solve it but as far as you do the table correctly i think half your problem is be solved and uh, that's it that's it for this video if you like the video of course give us give us the like button Just click on that like button subscribe to the channel for any more videos of this kind and of course share it with your friends so that they can take the benefit of this as well thank you